Yeah, it's great yeah. to just see how powerful you are. Like you can really turn your whole life around in one decision and never, ever, ever commit the same choices. You can. You just don't want to. That's okay. But at least own it. And then ask you when you feel like, oh, but then why? Okay, I have this weakness. Like, I, I want this, but I don't want it. I want it, but I don't want it. Then ask yourself, well, who is there two of me or just one of me? Who would be making that choice for me? Who am I fighting with? And go back to the I am and you're like, it's just me. So just a choice. And then it's easier to make that sacrifice that you believe is a sacrifice of the other thing that you have invested benefit in, perceived benefit in. This, this idea that there's two, two versions of you is what generates hesitation. And it weakens your will. I just, okay. I just wonder where it comes from because... <laughs> well, even that's a subtle dialogue with an alternate version of yourself. It's not obvious, but it is uh -huh. similar dialogue <laughs> because it's giving power away to your reason. It's like, why is it happening to me? <laughs> Yeah. Like there's something external that's happening to me. Yeah, like there is a power, a part of your will, which there isn't. That's so cool. Wait, say that again. Like there's as, a if, as if there is a power operating you aside from your own oh, will. Aside from your will. Yeah, it's assuming that same thing. Uh, Just, uh, yeah. you see? Mm -hmm. like, like, I wonder why we do that. It could be a valid question at certain points, but, but it's no longer a relevant question when you see there's only one of you. So you go on, then it's no longer a point. Right. Because you'll choose whatever you will. Yeah. How does the subconscious play into all this? Not anymore when you own yourself like this. Okay. There's still a process of being, becoming aware of what you're choosing that's detrimental. But it's no longer a factor in then deciding to change. So if you want to use that model, you could say that it's taking power back from your subconscious. Okay. So it's actually diminishing the subconscious until there's only consciousness. We're regaining our free will, as I've said it differently at other times. Regaining our free will, accumulating spiritual mass. It is an act of will to decide to no longer weaken yourself. Yeah, the consequence is full responsibility. We typically don't want that. So we make up illusions. And since everyone agrees to it, it can survive, it can validate it itself. Your know, victim is a total choice made out of empowerment. It's a very empowered choice. To choose to be victim is a very empowered choice. People choose it very strongly. Empowered in their choice for the comfort that this illusion of victimization brings. It's 100% choice. So victimhood is 100% the result of being empowered. Yeah, and not just because we say that's the case, but also because no. the universe will, uh, the universe responds in that way. Like if we know better, but if we don't act on it, we'll get greater catalyst. Mm -hmm. That is the law of responsibility. So when the universe detects that you know something, but you're not acting accordingly, you're going to get much more catalyst than you would previously making the same choice when you didn't know. Because it's benign, right? It's benevolent. Mm -hmm. So its reflection will always match what you're able to understand and interpret. <coughs> so if you know better, but you're not acting, I'll give you that reflection harder. But all this, like if you look at all your hesitations and insecurities, it's all just a lack of will. It's not a lack of will. You always have 100% will from the very beginning of your soul, soul's journey. <clears throat> but you're investing a lot of that will in mixed ideas and the illusion that there is something else that has power over you. Gathering your will. And it's a practice. It's something you have to train. Just train it with every little hesitation you feel. Like just decide to not hesitate. There's more truth than that, but that's one way. If you feel you're undermining yourself, like, <laughs> believing in a victim, or believing in a past self, or believing that trauma chooses for you, or believing it's just habit, or believing that you're doing well, so therefore, and you're making progress, so therefore, it's okay to not gather your will, and just do the right thing, and will what you know is the best thing to do. 
as soon as you notice that self-undermining, you can feel it, and the more you train it, the more sensitive you become to when you, when you lower your own frequency, because of this sudden split belief system, this split investment in this illusory ghost. Oh, yeah, but I can't do it because you know, there will be consequences. And the other way to do it is to eradicate the perception that consequences exist. It makes it a little easier to trust your self and your will, gather your will. So if we believe in consequences, then suddenly there's a reason for us to go into doubt. And then we split ourselves up into different parts. One part is who we know that we are and what we want to be, and we know what's right and in integrity and in alignment and most accelerated. But, but if there's no reason, so, okay, one way is to just regather all those excuses and not tolerate that, right, from the inside out and say, okay, I notice I'm undermining myself because I'm giving my power to, I want to give my power away to this illusory victim. And you might not call it a victim, but it is still a victim. You may not feel like it's a victim, but as soon as you don't take full ownership of a pattern that you have or something that you know you should change, but you're not changing it, something you want to change, but you're not changing it, something you want to be, but you're not being it, something you want to shift into, but you're not shifting into it, something you want to let go of, but you're not letting go of it, etc. All these like mixed frequencies that lower your vibration, the density of your consciousness, and then you become meek, you become weak. You become lame, and you'd never be able to run a gangster squad from that state. You'd be killed, right? One way is to notice when you're doing that and decide not to do that. Like, boom, you gather your will, and you just go do it. But the reason you're even tempted to drop your frequency and to split your will into parts and give it away to this illusory ghost of a, a victim or a past self or a trauma, of course, there's some relevance to trauma work and knowing yourself and accepting yourself and all that. So we're talking pretty high level self mastery already. But that's the case for all of you. So we can talk about it. But if there's no reason to do that, the reason is consequences, aka fear of unsafety. Like without unsafety, we wouldn't project that there's consequences, or we wouldn't project significance. If we were always safe, no matter what, we knew that, then consequences wouldn't really have the significance that they have. They would just be, oh, oh, they'd be reflections of our choices, that's it. But it would feel totally safe, like everything is made out of pillows and butterflies and flowers. And wherever we fall, it would just be a little tumble into like a joyful, like bee, getting tickled by the flowers into alignment. But since we believe we can be harmed, we could be unsafe, we project significance into consequences. And then we lower our frequency and we give our power away to these thoughts. And then we believe that we can't just decide what we know is best. So if you deconstruct the cause for your victimization, or you take the willful approach and you go like, I'm just not going to tolerate that anymore, regardless of the consequences. And you can do both. You can diminish the perception that consequences have significance or gravity, that they could lead to unsafety. And you can decide to just gather your will and realize there's only one of you. So who's making the choice? You or you? Yeah. Right? It's that simple. Yeah. It's like, I'm making the choice, but we don't want to acknowledge that. Yeah. Because that means that we're responsible for being lame. Mm 